I I saw something where you I think hooked up with Jay Z, Meek Mill. On yeah, a, on an initiative. Yeah, yeah, Reform Alliance. That's Talk definitely about something. the Reform Alliance. Well, Reform Alliance, you know, the Office of Community Support is what you know I'm a part of, you know, and basically is to try to reform the parole and probation, um, you know, system. Because you have, you know, like 2.5 million people who are incarcerated, but you have double that that's on supervised release. And, you know, you know, just like, you know, whether it's something you experience or some of your homeboys experiences that, you know, being on parole, being on probation is like being on eggshells. You know what I'm saying? Anything can get you put right back in prison, right? And like when people come home trying to transition into society, you know, there's that transition, you know, is met with another, you know, uh, another uh, system that is just a reflection of where you just left. So what we're trying to do to reform the parole and probation system is actually to be liaisons between individuals coming into society and transition into supervision and giving them all the things that they need to transition into society. You know what I'm saying? Because this is very important. You know what I'm right. saying? So to help what are some of the things that, that what, what people need to transition? I mean, the basic necessity. You know, people need money. People need food. People need clothes. You know what I'm saying? Cell phone. How can you not have a cell phone in 2020? You know what I'm saying? Jobs. You know, yeah, jobs, job experience, job education, you know, mental evaluation. We got to, you know, we got to evaluate these people coming in to society because there's a such thing as PTSD that you can obtain. And you don't have to be at war. You don't have to get sent off to no, no war or nothing like that. It's just, you. It's, it's a lot of mental illness that comes from being in a heightened, you know, environment where there's a heightened sense of, you know, threat constantly. You know what I'm saying? Sleeping with one eye open, sleeping with a knife on you, whatever the case may be. Like, that's not normal. We've normalized that in our culture, in our society. We normalize, you know what I'm saying? We've accepted that this is normal, that we go to jail for 10, 20 years, that when we get to jail, we got to, you know, keep the knife on us. And we, we've, we've made all these things normal. This is, this is unrecognized trauma. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm very passionate about aid and assisting individuals who coming back to society to first and foremost, get their minds right, their hearts right. At the same time, you know what I'm saying? You have to, you have to, you know, you have to help a man restore his honor and dignity. This is something that's been snatched for you for 10, 20 years. Got somebody telling you when to get up, when to piss, you know what I'm saying? When to lock down when they get off the phone and like whatever the case may be, it's like, yo, how do I, how do I, how do I get my nuts back? You know what I'm saying? Like you just stripped me of my dignity, my honor. Mm. And you come back to society. You know what I'm saying? Now you got another set of criticism to deal with because society don't think you're good enough now. You ain't good enough to get a job. You ain't good enough to do a lot of things. That's, that's a lot of stress. That's a lot of trauma. So when I think of prison reform, I think of everything that's contingent upon rectifying the affairs of the community that we return to so we don't have to go to prison. You know what I'm saying? We have to get our affairs in order in our communities so the next generation of people don't end up being warehoused in prison for another generation. So, you know, this is something that, you know, the Reform Alliance has given me the ability to assert myself and be effective in, you know, finding ways based on my experience of being in prison, coming home from prison, and constantly in proximity and communication with dudes that still, you know, a part of this perpetual will of, you know, going to prison and coming home from prison, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So it's, like, it's just, it's, it's a lot going on. That a lot of people, like I said, it's became it's been normalized. And a lot of people have become, 
desensitized to like what's really going on as far as mass incarceration. It's serious, y'all. Super serious. It's super serious, y'all. You know, you got first time offenders, man. You know, say I got a brother, a brother that actually helped me get out. Name is Weldon Angelos. You know, say I didn't meet him till I came home, but for 19 years, this man diligently fought for my clemency. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, 19 months. I'm sorry. Felt like it, but 19. <laughs> it you know felt like 19 years. Yeah, it felt like I knew him that long. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not the time, but it felt like I knew him that long because 19 months of spending my 300 minutes back and forth mm -hmm. with him, you know what I'm saying? My family talking to him, so on and so forth. And this man was somebody who got 55 years for selling $300 worth of weed. Mm. 55 and years. 55 years they sentenced him to. And, he, and he's Caucasian. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He bought hip hop to Utah. They tried to hang him for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about like certain, you know, things that you know, say, you like, want you want to be black, you want to you want to bring that yeah, black yeah. shit around, or oh, we gonna treat you like you're black, or oh, yeah, we gonna give you this nah, black time. Nah, yeah, I'm saying like for real, for real, like he, you know, he had made three sales to an undercover for three hundred dollars worth of weed each time, so it was really like nine hundred dollars worth of weed, and he had a wow. gun. So they gave him the nine twenty four C enhancement. He got fifty five years. He did sixteen years and got clemented. You know what I'm saying? under Obama mm. and hit the floor running. Basically, you know what I'm saying, lobbying to get people out of prison. Mm. Help me get out. Wrote a 34 page compassionate release on my behalf and I got released. You know what I'm saying? Duke Tanner, the boxer, you know, the, the, the dude that boxed from Indiana, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful brother, I met him, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and talked to him on FaceTime. I, I want to go out there in Indiana, you know what I'm saying? And, and talk to him some more. And get acquainted with you know him and help him with his efforts, you know, to advocate for prison reform as well. Because it's like this is what's happening. You know what I'm saying there's people out here that's actually advocating for this and fighting for this. And it's like you know when I look at the efforts of these people and the diversity of the people that's advocating, it's not just black people. This is advocacy, you know, what I'm saying on a whole level level. You got people who just compassionately know this is wrong, trying to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? But then when I look around my community, I see a lot of people either oblivious of what's going on, don't have the knowledge, or, you know what I'm saying, the information that's required in order to be, you know, instrumental and, you know, contributing to, you know, these reform efforts and so on and so forth. It, it just, it just, you know, it just prompts me to think that we have to start here. You know what I'm saying? We have to start educating our own on why we're ending up in these traps, why we keep ending up being warehoused in these prisons. You know what I'm saying? There's so much, yeah, there's so much going on right now. And I think that every man has a responsibility. We got kids, dog. You know what I'm saying? We got kids. Shit, I got a grandson yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you got old head. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is stuff that's, you know, I got adult kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got adult kids, man. And I know what it's like. So how can people um you know support what you're doing, follow what you're doing? Um you know. Yeah, I mean, well, basically how we can start is by educating ourselves. Educating ourselves by learning, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, what has led and contributed to mass incarceration and how we can prevent, you know what I'm saying, our generation, the younger generation of kids from falling into the same traps. So a lot of us, we need to start with educating ourselves on, you know, some of these, you know, offices that immediately impact our, our communities. Not so much about the presidency. You know, it's more so about looking at, you know, the councilmen, the assemblymen, the mayors, like all of these different offices that directly impact our communities. We need to be more instrumental in those things. You know what I'm saying? We need to be more instrumental in those things. Now, Reform Alliance, they have, you know, a website. 
basically you can um keep in tune with a lot of their you know advocacy in regards of you know prison reform and trying to you know establish new legislation and you know reforming parole probation you know police you know saying police reform you know, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of organizations out there that's on the front line. You know what I'm saying? You know, a good brother, you know, the good brother, my son, to make a man every day out on the front line every day. It's like there's a lot of people out here, you know what I'm saying, who are, you know, making themselves available. However they can be. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be extremely versed and understand, but you understand the problem. So once you understand the problem, you want to line yourself up with people who have solutions. Not be a part of the pity party, because it's easy to get amongst the circle of people and just constantly just keep shooting the breeze about the problem. So you want to line yourself up with people who are trying to get solutions. You know I'm saying those are the people you want to be around, you know. So, you know, very important that, you know, we find our place, you know what I'm saying, in this battle against the criminal justice system because, you know, they, they, they're really stripping, you know, our communities of men, you know what I'm saying? And you wonder why a lot of the young brothers, the young boys out there the way they are, you know what I'm saying? The men is gone. Hmm. The men is gone. A lot of these women is raising these men by themselves. There's a lot of single mothers out here. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of women out here trying to raise two and three and four kids by themselves. Because a man is no longer in the house. And ain't going to be in the house for another 20 years. You know? And it's like some of us are aware of this and we don't even like try to assist, you know what I'm saying, some of these women, you know what I'm saying, take on some of the responsibility, like grabbing up some of these kids. Like, this is stuff I grew up around. And that's really what I'm trying to, like, I'm really trying to reestablish is what I was, what I experienced as a kid. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was in the community, man. You know what I'm saying? You could do something in school and get an ass whooping four blocks before you even get to your house. Everybody that found out you did something crazy in school. Hmm. School crossing guard put foot in your ass. Everybody I heard you like come here. <clears throat> like you were going, with, not going home. Like you know, everybody was involved in your life. The whole community was involved in your life. You know what I'm saying? Men was different. You know, men was different. It's like now I don't know what's going on out here. I'm still trying to figure it out, man. I only been home for months, man. So I can't really tell you. I can't really give you an accurate estimation of what's going on out there, but it definitely don't look like nothing I'm familiar with. You know what I'm saying? It definitely don't look like nothing I'm familiar with. I'm looking at grown men walking around, their pants hanging off their butt, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it really, it just looks crazy to me. Tighter, just than, crazy. Yeah. tighter than girls' pants. Yeah, it's just, it's just crazy out there, you know what I'm saying? 